The race about to get underway then. On pole position is Graham Bryant starting in the Morgan. Alongside is Peter Hall, who's not raced here for five years. He starts in the family Chevrolet. The second row of the grid is the Morgan in the hands of Rick Lloyd, lining up alongside the Fertle family Chevrolet. The race underway now with Arthur Fertle behind the wheel of number 74 Chevrolet, trying to make a good start as they run down towards Cops Corner for the first time. Graham Bryant then grabs the lead, and I think Fertle goes second. Peter Hall not quite as rapid away from the line there. Tony Lees turns his way through in his yellow Morgan Plus 8. On board, though, now with Alec Hammond, who starts in the Chevrolet Camaro that he shares with John Young. Peter Wheeler's Aston Martin DB4 ahead, and the Cam brothers' Aston Martin ahead of that, getting a little bit crossed up. It's the international circuit in use, and so the cars, for the first time, then come through Beckett's and then through Ireland. And you can see the great diversity. You've got Morgans, Minis, Cortinas, and even a Jaguar XJS all battling together. The Lotus 47, the ex Jackie Oliver, John Miles, Lotus, and Pat Thomas going through in the background there. As down to Abbey for the first time, Graham Bryant leading. Fertile is second, but Peter Hall dropping away. A bit of straight on there goes the can Aston Martin. Rick Lloyd in the silver Morgan, right up behind Graham Bryant in the blue Morgan. The two of them nose to tail as they come now down towards Brooklands. They come out of Priory. Rick Lloyd makes his move on the inside. Is he going to go through? Graham Bryant gives him racing room. Rick Lloyd gets his nose in front, but Graham Bryant's alongside for the next part of the circuit, going into the right-hander of Luffield. And that should be enough to give Graham Bryant the lead back once again. But Rick Lloyd stays with him and goes right round the outside. Superb bit of driving by Rick Lloyd. And that now puts number 27 Morgan into the lead of the race. He rumbles his way over the start and finish line as Lackey Christopher, who in the meantime is still hard at work looking to get past Zoe North in the Ford Mustang here. Ahead of the pair of them is the Aston Martin of Ian McCallum as Christopher, who now goes to the outside there, runs very deep into Luffield. Now, can he find a way around the outside of two of them? He's got past the Mustang. Can he get past the Aston as well? No. Eventually, he's squeezed onto the curve, and that therefore means that Christophe Roux has to drop back in behind and also now try and work hard to maintain his place because Tony Lees and a yellow Morgan is right there as well. Down towards Cops Corner, and Zoe North on the inside of the Ford Mustang is going to go through. Yes, ahead of Ian McCallum's glorious Aston Martin DB5. Lucky Christophe Roux sawing away at the wheel of the escort as he sprints now up through Cops. And he's also looking to get past the Aston Martin. There you can see the white Mark 1 Escort almost level. And at the same time, Christopher is trying to keep at bay the Morgan of Tony Lees. Great battle going on here. Side by side, those two as they head up now towards Beckett's. The Escort, though, stays ahead of the Morgan. He's going to be racing in a very different car at Spa next week with the Pescarello that the Rail Centre Racing Team runs in the Le Mans series. But for this weekend, he's out in the family Chevrolet. Now, up front, Rick Lloyd is getting away a bit here from Graham Bryant. Now, Rick Lloyd has to hand over to Peter Horsman, whereas Graham Bryant will hand over to Oliver Bryant, his son. Shades of Mark Donoghue's efforts in the States in the 1960s, that car, as they're getting all crossed up ahead. is Mike Wilkinson's E-Type, which delays the Nick King Aston. They both pick away round on the outside. Mike Wilkinson Sr. starts in number 20. His son then takes the car over, Mike Wilkinson Jr. And up over the start and finish line now comes the Aston Martin. Alec Hammond still pressing on, and when John Young gets into that car, you can pretty much guarantee it's going to go rapidly as well. In the pit lane also, number 78 there. Up past the pit head, down towards Cops Corner, but Peter Horseman now is really on the back foot. He's got a very, very big gap to make up, and a problem again there for the Deeth Cooper S. Now, it is Clive Deeth at the wheel now. Harvey had it in the gravel, and Clive Deeth looks like it's a mechanical problem. The smoke coming out of the back of it, and therefore, I'm afraid, the Gladwin's Body Repair Centre's car is out of the race now. This car is in a hurry. Look at number 11. This now is Stuart Hall, who is charging his way onto terms with the Boise Fertile driven Chevrolet just up ahead. And Stuart Hall, who had a pretty arduous task on his hands. His father didn't enjoy a very happy stint. The car's got a power steering problem again, incidentally, which is making it very physical indeed for young Stuart to drive. But he comes powering his way now up through the right-hander of Woodcut over the start and finish line. And you can see now that he's got himself just about onto the tail of Boise Thirtle as they go down now towards Cops Corner. And this is the fight for third place. It's not going to be long, I don't think, before Stuart Hall finds a way through. Lapping the Porsche on the inside. Now accelerating up towards the left-hander of Maggots, then up towards Beckett's. It is still just Thirtle ahead. The Thirtle started off their racing career in Aston Martins and then came into the Chevrolet last year, and Stuart Hall is all over the back there of Boise Thirtle like a cheap suit, looking one way and then the other. 
Stewart last year driving in Formula 3. This year he's gone on to sports car racing. He's absolutely loving it, but he really relishes the chance to drive this car as well. Accelerating now down towards Abbey once again. Now where can Stuart Hall find a way past the two very similar Chevrolets together? The Andy Rouse tuned car then in fourth place and Boise Thirtle locks up, runs wide. He's going to leave the door open here, I think. And up on the inside is about to go Stuart Hall, but no, again, he can't quite do it. Boise Thirtle is a pretty formidable opponent here and he hangs on to third place as the two of them drop nose to tail out of Bridge Bend. Up now towards Priory. And again, Stuart Hall looking for the tighter line. Boise Thirtle slows his pace, defends vigorously. Stuart Hall goes to the inside, can't do it. Has a look on the outside, can't do it there either. Stuart Hall using lots of curve there. Knocks down one of the floppy markers, tries to sprint up on the outside now. A pair of them sprinting through the right hand of Luffield. Now, where is Stuart Hall going to find a way through? It should be on the run down towards Cox Corner. He's been able to pull back all of the time. It was only 0.6 of a second last time when they went over the line. Stuart Hall has dropped back a length, I would say, coming through Woodcote Corner, so he's not quite as close now as he will need to be to make the move stick. Down towards Cops. No, he can't do it as yet. Still sawing away at the wheel of that car as he now accelerates up through Cops. And Thirtle gets it all wrong. You saw the car run wide over the curb there. Boise Thirtle corrects the slide. But as they come now up towards Beckett's, it should be Stuart Hall who's been able to benefit from that. But no, again, he still can't do it. Now he makes a run up the most narrow of gaps going into Beckett's and it's worked for him at long last. Stuart Hall goes through. That was all a bit like his Formula Ford days, I think. They're having to really hustle on and Boise Thirtle accelerates and loses it. Gets all sideways, got the power down going through Ireland and just completely lost it. Well, Stuart Hall was ahead anyway, but now Boise Thirtle has taken himself out of the equation. So, down towards the hairpin at Abbey, Stuart Hall is in third place. I don't think he's going to be able to do much about getting ahead now of Peter Horsman's Morgan, but here's a replay. That was a pretty narrow gap. Stuart Hall went for it, took the place, and Boise Thirtle, back on the power, accelerates through Ireland, and there you see the back just completely gets away from him. Very, very odd moment, that. Goes onto the grass, slides out of contention, and Boise Thirtle should be able to rejoin, but that has cost him a huge amount of time. Yes, there is number 74 back into the race. Boise Fertle is going to be kicking himself because he could have been able to respond to Stuart Hall's challenge as he was. He ended up bumping into the barrier. There going over the line is the Silver Aston Martin of Ian McCallum, but now John Bustle at the wheel. Now, John remains a real hero in these cars. He goes down now towards the right-hander of Cops Corner. And then number 92, Roy McCarthy, now at the wheel of the family MG behind him. Check and flag those at the ready for Oliver Bryant. The family Morgan is going to win by quite some margin. Over the line he comes now. The car that he shares with his father, Graham Bryant, then wins the Charterhouse Heritage Grand Touring Car Challenge race here at Silverstone. And a long, long way back, he's going to be the other quick Morgan in the race of Rick Lloyd and Peter Horsman. On board, though, now with John Young. That car's been getting slower and slower and has a problem. John Young is limping down towards Bridge Bend. He's trying to hang on to a place in the top ten. But you can hear that all is not well here.